Tonight on Cronkite News, the zone is cleared. The city of Phoenix meets a court-ordered deadline to clean the homeless encampment, the steps that the city says they will need to take. That is my favorite thing about the Hawaiian people coming together, just feeling the aloha amongst everybody. Plus, using the water to form a connection, the way Hawaiians who are moving to the mainland are finding a way to call the Southwest home. And NASCAR crowns its new Cup Series champ, who went home with the title and how his journey was unlike any other driver. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Alexis Davis. And I'm Jacob Luthi. Thank you for joining us. The city of Phoenix met a court order deadline to clear and clean up tents and debris in the area known as the zone. This is the area between 7th and 15th Avenues and Van Buren and Grant Streets. Cronkite News reporter Zach Bradshaw spoke to a business owner in the area who's relieved but cautious about the city's efforts. Zach, what does it look like out there today? Yeah, guys, a lot of foot traffic. I'm just a few blocks here from the out safe outdoor space, a new area for people who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, the goal is to help folks who are living in the zone find a new place to settle. Local businesses say that the, the zone is just progress, but out here it's a start. They want to make sure the keep, city keeps on top of the problem. A few years ago, people who lived and worked in the area called the zone say they noticed the increased numbers of people experiencing homelessness was impacting their customers, their neighborhood, and ultimately hurting some businesses. A large portion demanded the city address the problem, including Joe Falacci, who owns the old station. I, I think that people realize that this is an epidemic. Uh, it's not going away. We need to address it. You know, obviously, a lot of these people do not want to go into shelters. After a number of lawsuits, the courts ultimately forced the city to clean up the area in the zone. The final block was cleaned up on Friday, and today, residents and property owners say they are relieved but want to make sure the bigger problem of homelessness is addressed. The homeless are everywhere now, you know, so we got to figure out a way to help them and, you know, get them the help they need and, uh, you know, create a safer environment for our community. The city posted signs like this to make sure people are aware the area remains closed to camping. The city plans to do outreach to help people find shelter. Currently, the safe outdoor space is hitting at about 21%, uh, 20, 21 people, excuse me, staying there. But the outreach program has about 200 people that could stay there. In Phoenix, Zach Bradshaw, Cronkite News. Evictions are on the rise here in Maricopa County. Close to 8,000 eviction notices were filed just last month. These numbers come from Maricopa County and ASU. In fact, since July, eviction filings have topped 7,000 every month. Maricopa County has not seen this amount of eviction filings in a single month since 2005. According to ASU, Maricopa County's eviction rate is double what the national average is. These statistics all have to do with eviction filings in a court and not actual decisions. And the city of Mesa is expected to approve the use of a hotel for people experiencing homelessness. The approval could require a zoning change and a permit to make improvements. The council already approved the purchase of the Grand Hotel. The city says it plans to use the hotel to house victims of domestic violence, the elderly and families. And it may be hard to believe, but the 2024 election is now less than a year away, and experts worry that the exodus of experienced workers will have an impact. But the election system gets a low-level test in Arizona tomorrow when local issues will be on the ballot in 12 counties. Renee Romo in our Washington Bureau, Bureau tells us what the outlook is. Research by New York University's Brennan Center found that one in five workers will be administering their first presidential election in 2024. And despite 12 of Arizona's 15 counties losing top election officials since 2020, a lack of poll workers does not seem to be a concern for Arizona Secretary of State Adrian Fontes. Do we still have a great crew of poll workers? throughout most of Arizona. These are folks that have been doing it for a long time. In fact, I met one recently who's been doing it for 75 years, and she ain't gonna stop. Fontes said there is a difference between poll workers and election administrators, the group that has mostly seen the mass exodus. But he and Maricopa County recorder Stephen Richer both realize there is still some concern over how experienced the frontline poll workers will be. I think it has been a real challenge for election officials and election jurisdictions throughout the country to play catch up with some of the things that 
one needs to know in order to administer elections. Arizona is trying to play catch up with training that not only teaches poll workers the technical skills required, such as how to operate the voting machines, but also how to deal with the threats in person and online that have surged over the last couple of years, something that is new to the training. In our training regimen where it didn't exist before, which is too bad, but we can move forward uh, in a responsible way uh, to try to stave off the negative impacts of the threats that, that some folks are feeling. Whether new or old, Richard says these workers are all trained alike to be prepared for the quote hullabaloo that has been compounding on election administration over the last three years. In Washington, Renee Romo, Cronkite News. Thanks, Alexis. Thanks, Renee. As for tomorrow's election, there is a lot on the ballot, including various bonds and overrides. In Maricopa County, there are more than 40 different proposals on the ballot. The money from these proposals is meant to fund school districts and city projects. Mesa Unified School District is seeking $500 million in city bonds to renovate school buildings. El Mirage is looking to use $41.5 million to build a second fire station as well as expand the police station and city hall. The city of Glendale has a $78 million bond on the ballot for public safety improvements and $82 million for street improvements. In Phoenix, four city proposed bonds total close to $500 million. In less than six months, all eyes will turn to Glendale for the conclusion of March Madness. We are six months to the day of the Final Four. The Final Four will be played on April 6th of next year at State Farm Stadium and the big game on April 8th. Arizona has been home to the Men's March Madness tournament before. The last time was in 2017. This is not the only major college sporting event coming to the Valley. In 2026, the Footprint Center will play host to the women's Final Four. When you think of recreation in Arizona, you don't necessarily think of sports out on the open water. But after the break, we'll, in we'll introduce you to a popular sport for Hawaiians that have relocated to the Valley. And that's the way it is. Monday, September... Newscasting has changed a lot since the time of Walter Cronkite. That's why here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, you can learn the studio production skills of today in real time. Whether you want to work audio, direct, technical direct, design graphics, or you can even run the floor. It's all part of the television production and graphics lab here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. We're going on in three, two... Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? Cronkite Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkite Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Nopales como este. Van a tumbar. Cronkite Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology. Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Welcome back. The Southwest is a popular destination when it comes to people relocating from Hawaii to the mainland. Arizona offers a lot of recreational activities, but none of them involve the ocean. There may not be any waves, but as our Tabitha Bland explains, Tempe Town Lake has become a popular destination for a traditional Hawaiian sport. When it comes to the sport of Hawaiian outrigger canoeing, paddlers are making a splash in the Southwest. Arizona alone has four outrigger canoeing clubs. I was able to join one club for multiple practices, and they are not only just bringing their skills to the desert, but also their culture. A strong pull right on the cue of their call. Hundreds of miles from the ocean, this boat courses through the waters of Tempe, Arizona. Nobody wants to leave home. Um, they leave because they have to. Ryan U. Darby is from Maui and, like many other Hawaiians, traded the salt water for the desert. There are a lot more Hawaiians, um, Pacific Islanders, coming to North America, uh, specifically the Southwest, 
um, because of cost of living in Hawaii. But they didn't leave the island life behind completely. They brought their paddles to fresh water. It's a narrow canoe and they typically seat six people and it was made that way for long journeys because that's how our kapuna, our ancestors, uh, disco discovered different islands. Usually the teams head out here in the evening, but as you can see, the sun is actually rising right now. And what time is it? 7.20. 7.20 in the morning. They're out practicing, getting ready for their next race. But there are some things they must do before hitting the water. So before we do anything, we always you know, lead with prayer, honor the earth and honor creator and all of our people with our prayers. The water is certainly not filled with crashing ocean waves. Well, the water is man-made, we know that, and then it separates these two sacred mountains. And then we have all these buildings right behind us. Um, the water's not as deep, you can't see the bottom. And even though it's not Hawaiian land, they are careful to acknowledge their gratitude of the native Southwestern people and their land. Being on the waters, we honor the Native American people. So the Gila River people, the Akama Otham people, and then the people of Peeposh, and then thinking about all of the Native people and this land, Without them, we wouldn't be able to paddle like this. So two days a week, members of the outrigger canoeing group Naleo Okekai meet, keeping their boats and traditions afloat. The main reason I ended up joining Naleo Okekai is not for paddling. Um, I realized the biggest thing I missed was my people. There are times that a sense of community must be created. Naleo on three. One, two, three. Naleo. Naleo. In this case, in a canoe. Naleo Okekai is competing in their next race this weekend in Parker, Arizona. The team will face other outrigger teams from California, Nevada, Hawaii, and Tahiti. Members of the team told us that this is one of their favorite races of the year. In the newsroom, Tabitha Bland, Cronkite News. Former President Donald Trump was back in a New York courtroom today to testify in his civil fraud trial. This is him moments before he testified today. The trial has to do with the former president's business practices. It all started last year after the Trump Organization was sued for $250 million. The lawsuit alleged Trump and other co-defendants intentionally inflated their financial assets. During Trump's testimony today, he reportedly attacked the judge presiding over the trial. And there's a new AI chatbot on the scene meant to take on ChatGPT. The new chatbot is called Grok, and it comes from a startup team under Elon Musk. Grok will be available to premium subscribers on Musk's platform X, formerly known as Twitter. Musk says testing is still at an early stage, but he suggested that Grok has a sarcastic sense of humor. Well, it was a pretty warm weekend here in the Valley, and the Phoenix and the Mercury is about to drop. Adriana Gonzalez-Chavez joins us now from the Cronkite Weather Center with what we, what we can expect. Good evening, everyone. We're sitting about 82 degrees right now, and nothing but clear and calm skies for the rest of your evening, dipping down to 75 degrees by 10 p.m. tonight. And then looking into our low temperatures, for tomorrow, staying in the 50s, the majority of the southwest part of the state, with Phoenix hitting a low of 58, Casa Grande a low of 51, while we're pretty chilly up north with Flagstaff hitting a low of 30 degrees and Grand Canyon hitting a low 22 degrees for tomorrow. So pretty chilly up north. Looking at our high temperatures for tomorrow, almost hitting 90 degrees in Phoenix with a high of 89, high of 89 also for Casa Grande, high of 86 for Yuma. Really nice weather to go outside up north with Grand Canyon hitting a high of 67, Flagstaff a high of 62. Really nice weather in Sedona with a high of 75 degrees for tomorrow. And then looking into our eight day forecast, Nothing but clear skies Tuesday through Thursday. Wednesday, we'll be hitting a high of 81 degrees with a low of 58. Thursday, some really good news. We'll be in the 70s once again with a low of 77, de with a high of 77 degrees and a low of 52 degrees for Thursday. Looking into the rest of the eight-day forecast, chances of clouds for Friday with a high of 78. Saturday, clear skies with a high of 81. So we'll be warming up into next week once again. Sunday, high of 86. Monday and Tuesday, chances of clouds with Monday high of 86. Tuesday, a high of 81 and a low of 61 degrees. 
I'm Adriana Gonzalez Chavez from the Cronkite Weather Center. Back to you. The final numbers have come out from the Strikeout Hunger Fundraiser and Arizona Lost. The fundraiser launched during the World Series between the Rangers and D-backs. Two food banks from Texas that teamed up during the World Series beat out St. Mary's Food Bank. The North Texas Food Bank raised $100,000 to St. Mary's $27,000. Sam Stern joins us now in the newsroom with our top sports headline. How's it going over there, Sam? Yes, great, Alexis. Thank you so much. And after the break, the chaos definitely continued, but for a different Phoenix team over the weekend. We will show you the Valley team on the rise and their next stop on the unpredictable journey. And that's the way it is. Monday, September. Newscasting has changed a lot since the time of Walter Cronkite. That's why here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, you can learn the studio production skills of today in real time. Whether you want to work audio, direct, technical direct, design graphics, or you can even run the floor. It's all part of the Television Production and Graphics Lab here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. We're going on in three, two... Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? Cronkite Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkite Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Nopales como este. Van a tumbar. Cronkite Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology. Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Good evening and welcome to the Cronkite Sports Report. I'm Sam Stern. It was NASCAR Championship weekend at Phoenix Raceway. In the playoff format, one driver won the race and another one was crowned Cup Champion. And as our Trey Matthews reports, the 312 lap race came down to the wire. In front of a thunderous sellout crowd at Phoenix Raceway, 29-year-old Ryan Blaney secured his first NASCAR Cup Series championship. Even though Blaney qualified the lowest of the championship four at 15th, he was still confident in his team since they had recent success at Phoenix, which included him finishing runner-up the last two times on this track. I thought Joey and our car were the best two by far in this race last year and can't just rely on your old stuff and expect it to run good. You have to continue to evolve. So hopefully we do that. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we bring the same speed we had here last year. That would be very nice. While he didn't win the actual race, he finished ahead of the other championship four drivers. Ross Chastain, who ended up winning, didn't make it easy on Blaney, which ultimately tested Blaney's patience. But Chastain made it clear that he didn't want to ruin Blaney's championship aspirations, despite racing him hard with nothing to gain on his end. I was not going to put him in a position to, to damage his car in any way or put his car in a bad spot other than keep him behind me. And as long as he's behind me, that's all I cared about. He didn't have to pass me to win the championship. He could stay right there. There was no other competitor for points. Blaney's championship also secured Team Penske back-to-back -back titles. He now follows in the footsteps of Brad Keselowski and current teammate Joey Logano as drivers to bring a championship home to the organization. Blaney explained the significance of adding to Team Penske's legacy. Would never have thought, you know, 10 years ago I'd be here today. You know, just was lucky to be able to have an opportunity to drive for a team like, like Team Penske and, and work with such great people, you know, from you know, the Xfinity side to the Cup side to be able to, to drive for the Wood Brothers, you know, for a couple of years. NASCAR has confirmed that Phoenix Raceway will be the site of the 2024 championship where Ryan Blaney will hope to defend his title. But for the time being, it is now officially the offseason for NASCAR. At Phoenix Raceway, Trey Matthews, Cronkite News. One more! Yes, baby! Yes, baby! Back home, baby! Back home! Mama! Si, si! Esta, esta, vamos! Vamos! 
As the number six seed, the Phoenix Rising have punched a ticket to the USL Championship Final after defeating the Sacramento Republic 2-1. to one. Phoenix has had a reputation of scoring late, and former Republic midfielder Emil Quaisho did it once again, scoring the game-winning goal from 30 yards out in the 92nd minute, securing the Western Conference title. The team will travel to South Carolina to face the Charleston Battery this Sunday. To baseball, four Arizona Diamondbacks players are being recognized for their outstanding performances on both sides of the ball throughout the season. Cattell Marte and Corbin Carroll were both named Silver Slugger Award finalists. Marte, the NLCS MVP, hit 25 homers, while Carroll became the first rookie to hit 25-plus homers with 50-plus steals in a season. On defense, Christian Walker earned his second straight gold glove at first base, and Gabriel Moreno became the first D-backs catcher to win a gold glove award. The good news continues as we shift from the diamond to the gridiron. The Arizona Wildcats are bowl eligible for the first time since 2017 after registering its sixth win of the season on Saturday night, beating number 19 UCLA 27-10. In the process, the Wildcats beat a ranked opponent for the third straight time, a first in program history. Arizona now is also ranked 23rd in the country, and let's just say Jed Fish's team is feeling real good. When you feel you belong, then you go into every game after that with an expectation to win. When you feel you don't belong is when you have to hope and pray. And uh, I think our team right now feels they belong. Uh, I think we've, we've now, we're eight and four in the last 12 games we've played. And uh, we're going to continue to see if we can build off of that and see how we can do these next three weeks. NCAA college basketball is back, and the women are tipping off the season tonight. Let's now take a look at the Arizona school schedule. The Lopes of GCU started their season at home against St. Mary's, while the Sun Devils will also open up their season at home against Texas San Antonio. Meanwhile, the Wildcats are in Las Cruces to face New Mexico State, and the Lumberjacks are in Oregon to take on the Ducks. The Suns' slow start is leaving many questioning when they will be able to see the big three on the floor together. But head coach Frank Vogel is focused on what he can control. When asked about how the rest of his roster is stepping up, this is what he had to say. Not good enough, but they're competing, and uh, you know they're giving good effort. Uh, I, I mean, I actually think the effort still can be better the last two games, but our guys are, are doing the best they can to uh, to pick up the slack for sure. And um, no one's feeling sorry for us. We're not feeling sorry for for ourselves. Uh, I'm not putting any thought really into Devin Booker and Bradley Beal. I'm putting all my thought into the guys that we have available. We'll see if Booker and Beal can get back on the floor on Friday for the first ever NBA in-season tournament. Our team will have you covered on how the tournament works and the implications for the Suns. That wraps up your Cronkite Sports Support. And as always, I'm Sam Stern. Jacob and Alexis, back to you. We all know calling 911 is strictly for emergencies. But one little boy may have not learned that lesson just yet. Coming up after the break, the heartwarming reason he decided to call his local 911 operator. We tell ourselves stories as a nation. These stories need to be highlighted. They need to be explored. We're the dreamers. How serious is America's commitment to looking at its history? How can we learn from the past? <gasps> Put your head up. Douglas said, you're going to look me in the eye and see my humanity. It's illuminating. I'm seeing the expansiveness of my history. It's pretty great. There's so much richness to black life and black culture. I think the story of Muslims in America is the story of America. Tonight, they are free. I cannot imagine how excited you must have been. It's a wonderful feeling. This is why we do this. It makes me even more committed to struggling for a better world. Here at the TV Production Graphics Lab, we are behind the scenes making the news happen. Gain experience in the control room directing, teledirecting, and rolling the audio of every Cronkite News show. Run the floor and work in a professional environment, honing your skills for the future. Create graphics that will be seen by the local community on Arizona PBS. 
be a part of the bloodline that makes the Cronkite News shows possible. ASU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music, this is Sun City Garage, to sports coverage, against the Brewers in his last outing, he went to news, the bill also gives parents the ability to see, and entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. Welcome back. One mom in Florida got a shock when an officer showed up on her doorstep. That's right. The officer showed up after her son made a call to 911. But the reason why he called is going to melt your heart. Take a listen to what happened when the officer arrived. Did you call this gentleman? Did you call the police? No, I didn't think you give him a hug. You called him to give him a hug. <laughs> That's right, the little boy called 911 because he wanted a hug. The officer obliged and then gave him a little reminder about when you should and shouldn't call 911. That's it for Cronkite News. Thank you for joining us. And to see top Arizona stories anytime, log on to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.